There are these creatures that came from off-world. These are untouchables. NASA, well known for its huge disclosures, has, as a matter of fact, uncovered that this new planet isn't simply enchanting considering the reality of its size and locale, yet likewise on the grounds that it shows lights that have every one of the stores of being phony. Are we basically revealing insider real factors that could change our view of the universe? Could this divulgence at some point mean there is life on various planets? Accompany us as we inspect NASA's enchanting disclosures and uncover the reality with regards to these astonishing lights. In 2007, NASA transported off the Dawn Shuttle with a mission to investigate the most hypnotizing objects in our close biplanetary gathering. Dawn was uncommonly outfitted with three ion motors, permitting it to embrace an excellent excursion. Dawn's outing began with a 14-month investigation of Vesta, the second biggest space rock in the belt. During this time, Dawn sent back definite pictures and information, uncovering Vesta's confounding surface and different land chronicles. Subsequent to finishing its essential objective at Vesta, Dawn set out on the second and maybe most beguiling piece of its undertaking, a nearby assessment of the dwarf planet series. Due to its ion motors, Dawn had the option to leave Vesta's circle and embarked on a mission to reach Ceres, an accomplishment that conventional synthetic drive would have found testing. These motors, given a steady delicate push, enabled Dawn to travel immense distances proficiently and enter a steady circle around Ceres. First found in 1801 by Italian space expert Giuseppe Piazzi, Ceres is the largest object in the space rock belt between Mars and Jupiter. For quite a while, it was considered the littlest dwarf planet in our planetary group until its renaming in 2006. With a measurement of around 950 kilometers, Ceres is the largest and most significant body in the space rock belt, and one of the most interesting due to its exceptional attributes. As Dawn arrived at Ceres, researchers enthusiastically expected the principal itemized photos of this unusual world. They saw brilliant spots dispersed across its surface most eminently in a huge crater now known as a seer cavity. These splendid spots ignited quick interest and speculations among standard researchers. Before Dawn's mission, the best picture we had of Ceres was a foggy, low-resolution photo taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Specialists had barely any insight into this dwarf planet, and the chance of at long last getting a nearby view was thrilling. What insider secrets would Ceres uncover? What new revelations anticipated the mission? Dawn vowed to upgrade our comprehension of the close by planetary bunch's advancement and the job of water in shaping planetary bodies. The brilliant spots on Ceres were unlike anything seen on different space rocks. They appeared to be made of profoundly intelligent material, potentially salts abandoned by sublimated water. This prompted the chance of cryovolcanism on Ceres, a cycle where volcanoes emit with water or briny fluids rather than liquid rock. However, what precisely are these secretive lights, and what do they uncover about Ceres? Might they be proof of progressing geographical movement or something considerably more remarkable? Ceres stands separated from other heavenly bodies in the space rock belt because of its size, mass, unique structure, and potential for water and ice. Not at all like most rough space rocks, Ceres has a structure more akin to a comet, suggesting it holds more mysteries about the early planetary group than we ever envisioned. Following two years on its excursion, the Dawn rocket at last began its approach to Ceres in mid-2015. This moment marked a significant accomplishment in the mission as Dawn had the option to convey humanity's first close-up perspectives on the biggest object in the space rock belt. As Dawn moved nearer, the photos of Ceres developed progressively definite offering brief looks at a world recently covered in secret. The primary pictures uncovered a surface specked with craters, normal for a long history of influences. However, it wasn't simply the pits that grabbed the eye of researchers and space aficionados alike. Among these elements were abnormal brilliant spots that particularly diverged from the more obscure, harsh scene. As the pictures kept on working on in resolution, Standard researchers hummed with speculation about the idea of these brilliant spots. Were they ice patches reflecting daylight, or might they at any point be something substantially more? Theories went from mineral stores to potential indications of cryovolcanic movement. Unbelievably, 
Closer investigation uncovered that the most splendid spot was not a particular substance but rather maybe an assortment of a few particular detects. This disclosure only extended the mystery. The speculation that these were stores of salts abandoned by sublimating water gained some forward movement. This would suggest that Ceres had, or still has, some type of geographical movement capable of moving water or briny fluids to the surface where they quickly dissipate, abandoning splendid intelligent stores. These disclosures tested existing thoughts about Ceres, demonstrating it to be a more perplexing and dynamic world than recently thought. The presence of such highlights raised the chance of subsurface water or briny pockets, which could have huge implications for how we might interpret the potential for life in our solar system. However, what makes Ceres exceptional compared to different planets? Ceres is an intriguing world, frequently portrayed as a cold planet with an unpleasant yet penetrable surface. Not at all like most space rocks in the belt, which are made mostly out of rock and metals, Ceres stands out because of its striking organization. Its surface is a combination of water ice and hydrated minerals, including clays and carbonates, which give it a fundamentally less dense structure compared to its neighbors. This composition suggests that Ceres has a significant amount of water. The surface layer is rough yet porous, with ice and different volatiles caught inside. This chilly trademark is more suggestive of a comet than a common space rock, demonstrating a set of experiences that may have involved a mix of rough and icy materials. Digging deeper underneath its surface, Ceres reveals even more intriguing aspects of its structure. The dwarf planet is believed to have a separated inside comprising of a slushy mantle and a core. The mantle is remembered to be wealthy in water ice, making up around half of Ceres' total volume. This mantle, perhaps a blend of rock and salty water, surrounds a core that might be made out of denser material, conceivably silicates. The presence of such a huge amount of water ice suggests that Ceres may have once held liquid water, especially if its core was warmed by radioactive decay early in its history. This internal design sets Ceres aside from its space rock neighbors and also raises interesting questions about its true potential for land activity and the role of water in its development. Yet that's not all. The discovery of ammonia clays on Ceres suggests that the dwarf planet might have formed in a colder part of the solar system before relocating inward. The presence of ammonia lowers the freezing point of water, supporting the possibility of subsurface brines. These insights into Ceres' structure and history not only enhance our understanding of this dazzling dwarf planet, but also offer significant clues about the processes that govern the formation and evolution of icy bodies throughout the nearby planetary group. Cryovolcanism is a captivating and somewhat intriguing geographical interaction, particularly when contrasted with the more recognizable volcanic activity we see on Earth. Unlike conventional volcanoes that emit liquid rock, cryovolcanoes, also known as ice volcanoes, emit volatiles such as water, ammonia, or methane. These substances can exist as fluids or gases in the very cool conditions where cryovolcanoes are found on Ceres. Cryovolcanoes function by permitting water mixed with dissolved salts to come to the surface. When this briny water interacts with the vacuum of space, it rapidly sublimates, changing directly from a solid or liquid state to gas, abandoning brilliant intelligent salt stores. These salt stores form the puzzling brilliant spots seen on Ceres' surface. The most popular of these brilliant spots is found in a crater named AAR, known as Spot 5. This region has drawn huge attention due to its high reflectivity and discontinuous hazes observed by the Dawn spacecraft. These mists are believed to be caused by the sublimation of water, proposing that cryovolcanic activity may still be ongoing or may have occurred somewhat recently. Additionally, Ceres has several other splendid spots, each with its own unique features. These spots are not restricted to one region but rather are dispersed across the dwarf planet's surface, demonstrating that cryovolcanism may be a far-reaching peculiarity on Ceres. The presence of these splendid spots highlights the remarkable nature of Ceres and raises significant questions about the potential for life in our planetary system. The dynamic and evolving nature of Ceres challenges past assumptions that it was a geographically dead world. As the Dawn spacecraft provided more detailed pictures of Ceres, an abundance of surface, features began to arise. The outer layer of Ceres is specked with various craters, each telling a story of the dwarf planet's history. 
Some craters are generally shallow and eroded, demonstrating an old surface that has been exposed to various influences over billions of years. Others are better preserved, with sharp edges and deep basins, suggesting later influences. Curiously, the number of craters on Ceres is less than initially anticipated. This discrepancy points to geographical processes that may be restoring the planet and eradicating evidence of older influences. One speculation is that Ceres' icy crust allows for a type of cryovolcanic resurfacing, where subsurface materials occasionally well up and cover older features. This continuous geographical activity suggests that Ceres is not a static world but one that has been and may still be actively evolving. Additional evidence of surface deformation on Ceres comes from the observation of cracks, grooves, and ridges on its surface. These features show that Ceres' exterior has experienced significant tension and stretching. Some of the cracks appear relatively young, potentially a couple hundred million years old suggesting that the crust is still somewhat dynamic. The ridges and grooves on Ceres likely formed as the crust was stretched and pulled apart, while lines of mountains and compressional ridges show regions where the surface was pushed together. These contrasting features provide a brief look into the intricate cycles that have shaped Ceres over time. The presence of a large dome-shaped mountain in one of the craters suggests the probability of internal tension or upwelling of materials, potentially connected to cryovolcanism. This feature, alongside the broad array of cracks and ridges, points to a dynamic and evolving surface. Dawn's mission has also uncovered interesting surface composition. Beyond the brilliant spots and intelligent salts, NASA's data has revealed a range of surface materials that are vital to understanding Ceres' geological history. For example, specific regions on Ceres show a dark, fine-grained material that stands out in contrast to the brighter salt stores. This darker material is believed to be a type of carbon-rich substance, perhaps organic, adding one more layer of complexity to Ceres' composition and suggesting a potential for prebiotic chemistry. The connection between these materials and the icy surface could play a role in the chemical processes occurring on Ceres. Additionally, the discovery of organic compounds on Ceres has sparked significant interest in astrobiology. Organic molecules, which are the building blocks of life as we know it, have been found in carbon-rich mixtures. These discoveries are especially astonishing since they suggest that Ceres may have conditions suitable for the formation of more intricate organic molecules. The presence of these compounds opens up possibilities for life, or at least the building blocks for life, being present on this dwarf planet. Another striking feature is the large number of puzzling dome-shaped structures on Ceres. These domes, some reaching heights of up to six kilometers, are believed to be the result of subsurface processes pushing material through the crust. Their shapes and sizes suggest that they might have formed from cryovolcanic activity or internal pressure forcing materials upwards. Understanding these developments is significant for unraveling Ceres' geological history and its internal structure. Furthermore, the gravity data gathered by Dawn has provided insights into the internal density distribution of Ceres. Variations in gravity reveal the presence of different layers within the dwarf planet, indicating that Ceres' interior might have complex structures, including a possible subsurface ocean or briny pockets. These revelations are crucial for understanding Ceres' thermal history and its capability to support conditions favorable for life. Overall, the Dawn mission has not only expanded our knowledge of Ceres, but also changed how we interpret small celestial bodies in the solar system. As more data is analyzed, researchers hope to unravel the mysteries of this enchanting world and its potential to provide insights into the broader processes that govern planetary evolution and development.